Hey guys, welcome back to my everyday makeup series. We are on March and this is the look we're working with today. I kept some elements on the matte side while still feeling fresh and very spring-like. Freckles are definitely the showcase of this everyday makeup look. So if you wanna see how I did it and what products I used this month, then keep on watching. I feel like today's lighting is perfect, especially because I don't need to use any artificial lighting. We have consistent overcast clouding. Perfection. I might put this in my hair just to keep all these little pieces away from my face. Getting into base, this has been the duo, especially for this month and the ending of February. It's the Super Gloop, oh my gosh, I can't talk. Super Goop Glow Screen SPF 40 in Sunrise. I also have Sunset. I kind of wish I got the one in between because I end up mixing Sunrise and Sunset, which potentially is the one that is literally in between. But my theory was I'll wear sunset whenever I have more of a tan and when I don't, I'll have this one. So I'm kind of veering to this one a little bit more and then I mix it in with this, this ultraviolet dream screen tinted veil SPF 50. So your girl is SPF'd up. When it comes to application, I have been applying it with my Pearl Beauty, the one cream brush. But when we were in Florida, I literally just put it all over my face with my fingers. So very easy application. I like to stipple it on first, just to make sure I'm getting coverage where I want it. Don't forget your ears, behind your ears and your neck. See how that evens out my skin tone without giving intense coverage. I just feel like I look a little bit more consistent with what's going on. I pick two areas. Oh, I thought I learned my lesson. I was doing so good, like literally two months of not even touching my skin. And then they were just like, asking to be touched, which the temptation took over and I regret it, but it is what it is. As I mentioned, if I want a little bit more coverage, I like to take a concealer. This is the Kylie Cosmetics one. I'm still on it. And I'm gonna put it in areas I wanna add a touch more coverage, those two areas that I picked. Around my chin, a little bit around my nose and a touch on my forehead. That is where I want a little bit more coverage. Then for under my eyes, I've been taking a brightening concealer. So I've been minimizing even the coverage under there. This is the Rare Beauty, I think it's called Light Medium Under Eye Brightener. So you can use this under a concealer if you want, but I feel like the older you get, the less you use under the eye is just massive, especially for reducing the appearance of creasing and cakiness. Now, this specific product that I'm putting on has a lot of slip to it, meaning it's quite liquidy. liquidy. I'm gonna preface <laughs> this video is not my best pronunciation because baby brain takes over. It's like my tongue swells up and I can't like pronounce every word perfectly, so apologies. I'm gonna let this set for a little bit and I'm gonna move on to my cream bronzer. I have been wearing Fair Cream Bronzer from Pearl Probably the last two months, I wore it the entire time in Florida, and I just love the color that gives because it's not too bronzy, and it just adds the depth that I really want without going overboard. You guys know I love to go overboard with bronzer. But I'm just gonna pop this on with my fingers first. It's also really good for a nose contour because it's more neutral in tone. Same brush, I love using one brush for all base cream products because it just helps blend everything together and it doesn't look like section blending. If you really like that like high intensity photo shoot event style makeup, you can use a different brush for every single step of your makeup, but if you're wanting everyday makeup, hence the title of this video and the style of makeup I tend to do, use the same brush, it just blends everything more organically and it looks more natural on your skin. As always, I'm gonna go upwards right into my hairline. You can over blend if you want because we haven't blended out our concealer so that will touch up any over blending. Really like to keep bronzer mostly on my forehead because that's where you naturally get most of the sun. I believe when this video goes live, our Pearl Beauty website, our spring savings page has also gone live and I'm pretty sure cream bronzers are on like an insane discount at the moment. So definitely go check out in the description below. Now that we've roughly blended all that bronzer out, I'm gonna just start blending out my concealer. If I was just to like wipe it, that would take away any coverage that I really want in certain areas. Obviously if your skin's absolutely perfect, you can just like whip on, lash on the makeup. 
but if you want to keep coverage in certain areas you do need to have more of a stippling motion around my eyes i do like to use my finger i just feel like it looks a little bit more natural and that warmth from skin on skin contact blends it seamlessly i have the lightest scar right here from picking something so i potentially might try and cover it just because i feel like it's gonna annoy me Pop the tiniest bit of concealer there the kylie one and this is in 3n i was wearing 4n right when i got back from florida but i need a little bit of a lighter shade now that i've lost some of my natural tan I'm just using my finger to dab that on for controlled coverage that definitely brought it down a little bit i'm gonna have to go on top with cream bronzer so then it doesn't look blotchy i'm just gonna lightly press on top i tend to like go in a whisper voice whenever i'm mimicking my motion but i feel like that looks a little bit better i've done a little combination the last couple of weeks with brows you already know my obsession for the brow blade from brow aid the little spoolie fell off so i'm gonna i go back and forth from the brow aid brow gel which is in the shade 01 light so this is obviously going to give coverage so i tend to wear this if i don't wear the pencil and then when i do want the pencil a little bit more structure i've been wearing this O hey brow clear eyebrow fixing gel take this a clear one and really take off like it comes out with too much product on the spoolie so i like to remove most of it really just brush up my brows when i first used this i was like uh i don't know if it's really that great but it actually kept my brows in place all day without feeling like waxy or extreme i don't feel like i suit that laminated brow vibe but i do like when my brows are lifted and i find because most of my fullness is in this middle section because there's more hair there naturally throughout the day they tend to fall so i want a little bit of lift but not extreme lift by any means and i feel like this is the perfect amount of hold for me in my brow type brow hair i'm gonna let that dry a little bit and right before they're fully set i like press it on with my fingers and that is them for all day lightly tapping on another reason i love this product is because there's no residue i find some like extreme hold brow gels have obvious residue whether you use like soap brows or those waxy ones or even the gel ones there's like residue and i just am not into that i want my brows to look really natural now i'm going to take the brow blade in bronze and fill any sparse areas now that my hair is lifted i can see exactly where i need a little bit more coverage fullness and then i'm not overfilling my brows i mean for an everyday look i don't think you need any more than that i just feel like they're perfected and filled in just to my liking before i curl my lashes i'm going to take a little bit of this giorgio armani eye tint in 20m i know they actually have names but i find on the actual bottom sticker they don't have the name i should have kept the packaging but 20m this is like a warm tone tan eye tint color and if you have blue eyes because of the orange undertone in it it's going to really help pop because it's just a tint it's not overwhelming so you can keep your eyes down for like a hot second to let it dry a little bit more but i just use my ring finger and softly pat it out so it's not too much of a harsh line and it just gives subtle definition a wash of color and i think it's really pretty especially if you have blue eyes whatever's left on my finger i'm putting a little bit over my nose i know that seems weird but one of the steps that we're gonna go back to this will make sense so trust the process hopefully by now you guys also own an eyelash curler because the potential your lashes have with it is way better than without mascara i do like the poco beauty one which is an irish brand but my manager and i have like mascara talk all the time and how we're always looking for another one to recommend because most mascaras transfer on us so she sent me this one because she loves it and it's the lancome there's a hair in my nose so excuse my picking this is a oh gosh it's so tiny oh i'm not gonna look to pronounce that this is the name of it it's pretty minimal wouldn't say it's gonna give like incredible volume but if you want a nice everyday lash then this will give you that ignore my very messy application as you can see it's quite a subtle lash, but perfect for every day. I'm gonna set some of the cream that we did. So I'm taking this Hourglass Blush in Brilliant Nude, and I'm keeping it more at the area that there's a bit more color, not so much highlight, and pressing it on the high points of my cheek, forehead, and obviously my other cheek. Almost as like a 
Lush Bronzer Hybrid. This does have like a built-in highlighter, so it's gonna give a nice natural glow. It's just gonna keep any cream in place a little bit longer with adding a little bit more color and obviously coverage. To set my under eyes, I'm taking the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I've fallen back in love with it. Really is the best for when it comes to loose setting powders. So I'm taking on this little setting sponge from Huda Beauty. I'm gonna make sure I have no lines before we set in place or else you're setting your creasing in place. I'm taking the little sponge, going right under my eye and around my nose. So this is where you can be a little bit more specific on where you want your setting powder to be. My largest pores are around my nose. So that's obviously where I'm gonna keep most of this. Now this is definitely something that is new for me and very much past the trending point of when it kind of became a thing. I'm taking this little Freck Noir, the original Freckle product, and I'm gonna put some freckles on my face because after Florida, I feel like whether there's sunspots or a little bit of freckles, my mom does have a little bit more of a freckly face than I do. Maybe it's just aging. I noticed there was like tiny little freckles around my nose and I was like, I wanna enhance them a little bit slash add some more. So I've been taking this product and just using it very light handedly. And I kind of work in sections because I don't want it to be too, too dramatic. So I'll put it around my nose here and then really press it in. And then also a little bit under my eye going up because that's where naturally there's a couple freckles on my face already. And I just love like the subtle, I don't know, hint of summer it gives to my face because obviously freckles come out in the sun. So I've been doing this the last couple of weeks and I never did it whenever it was actually a thing to do. Ooh, that was a big freckle. This is very optional, but just something I've been doing for my everyday makeup. To add to the blush situation, you know how I used a little bit of that eye tint because it had that warm tone. I'm gonna take the Pearl Beauty Core Essentials palette and dip my brush into Easy Going, which is obviously a nice peachy shade. Lightly go on the high points of my face almost like under my eye area and then a little bit over my nose and because it has that peachy undertone i think it just kind of helps aid with this look i'm also gonna swipe that over my eyes and that's taking off the mascara that literally went everywhere and it's also setting that eye tint that we put on because it still has the same tone i'm gonna take this off because we're pretty much done with the base not all the time whenever my mascara is dry i go back to my curling wand what is this called eyelash curler and just give it another little pump, especially if it's more of a natural looking lash because it just adds a bit more of a curl. It can be a little risky because sometimes I do it when my lashes aren't fully dry, but if the mascara is not the best at keeping a curl, this just kind of gives a little extra reassurance. It lifts the lashes super subtly and I just like to do it sometimes. I like to fill my lips fully with Sweet Talker, as we know, and then outline with Whisper. I don't know, this base is just foolproof and truly such an everyday staple for me. And then in the center, I like to dab Girl Next Door just because it brings a little bit more of that creaminess back and whatever's left on my fingers, I just add it to the apples of my cheeks so it looks a little bit more cohesive altogether. All right, this is the final look. I have been loving and living in this look on an everyday basis when I do wear makeup. I feel like this is perfect introduction into that spring summer makeup without being incredibly bronzy and glowy there's still a couple matte elements the freckles are obviously my favorite part at the moment hopefully you enjoyed let me know what other looks you want to see in the comments down below and i'll see you in the next video bye